Bruce Springsteen is not the only heroic creative force in the saga of Asbury Park. There was another star on the scene during the original glory days, another New Jersey native born to run, who lived and went to school in Asbury Park and later covered the resort town for the New York Tribune. Now, while it's true that show-stopping rockers were not to be found back in 1893, Stephen Crane was the literary equivalent of one, a young visionary with a fierce lyric sense and a wholly unique style, his insights edged with irony, his imagery inimitable. If rock equals the life force as it does with Springsteen, Crane rocked as a journalist, rocked as a novelist, and rocked as a short story writer and poet. The blonde-haired, blue-eyed Stephen, 14th and last child of Mary Helen and the Reverend Jonathan Townley Crane, was born on November 1, 1871, in Newark. Stephen once remarked, The family is founded deep in Jersey soil, and I am about as much of a Jersey man as you can find. In 1883, the widowed Mrs. Crane bought Arbutus Cottage, the house on 4th Avenue in Asbury Park, for herself and her three youngest children. Stephen proudly had his picture taken on Cookman Avenue, where at age 16, he covered the local news for his brother, the Asbury Park correspondent for the Associated Press. After leaving Asbury Park in 1892, Stephen began his bohemian lifestyle in Manhattan. In 1893, he and his pals celebrated the self-publishing of his first novel, Maggie, A Girl of the Streets. It is at the art studio of his friend Corwin Linson that the 22-year-old Stephen reads about the great battles of the Civil War as an inspiration for the novel that would forever be linked to his name. The Black Riders was Stephen's first of two volumes of poetry. He most admired Emily Dickinson, but his lines, as he called them, eschewed both meter and rhyme. Stephen was in constant pursuit of romantic love, his passion evident in the pace of youth and other works. Stephen relished the untamed outdoors and never looked better or felt healthier than when he was riding. He said, a good saddle horse is the one blessing in life. As a war correspondent, Stephen experienced combat firsthand during both the Greco-Turkish War and the Spanish-American War in Cuba. In 1899, Stephen and Cora lived in a baronial estate in England. Their circle of friends included Joseph Conrad, Henry James, H.G. Wells, and J.M. Barry. The last photograph of Stephen was taken at age 28, shortly before his death from tuberculosis. Stephen's life came full circle in 1900 with his burial in the Jersey soil of Hillside, just a few miles from the little brick parsonage in which he was born. Stephen Crane saw his hometown of Asbury Park as a symbol of the young nation's hopes and its hypocrisy. Late 19th century America summed up in the smiling sunburned tourists paying to ride wooden horses in circles. Stephen described the Asbury Park boardwalk thus, the people come to see the people for there is joy to the heart in a crowd. One is in life and of life then. Nothing escapes. The world is going on and one is there to perceive it. The livid lightnings flashed in the clouds. The leaden thunders crashed. A worshiper raised his arm. Hearken, hearken, the voice of God. Not so, said a man. The voice of God whispers in the heart so softly that the soul pauses, making no noise and strives for these melodies, distant, sighing, like faintest breath. And all the being is still 
to hear.